Welcome to Comic Station, issue number 85 for August 13, 2014. Yep. And we actually have a run of Action Lab. Yeah, first one up we've got Midnight Tiger, and it's just as boring and generic as that name implies. Matter of fact, it seems like a, actually a kind of generic retake on something that's already in their lineup. Yeah, so, that kind so of seems funny. it's kind of lame when a company will rip themselves off, but it's not limited to just action ripping off action. You also have a lot of stuff that feels really troubling reminiscent of the Red Circle comics, from things like Fox, The Shield, Inferno, especially when you have a red circle on the comic. It doesn't help also that the villain of this is named Inferno, is dressed in red and has fire powers. The hero looks like the fox, but is named uh, Midnight Tiger, and Jaguar is another Red Circle character. Mm -hmm. And they also do a lot of Spider-Man stuff in it as well. Uh, there's even a scene where he has his uh, mask flash halfway across his face. Hmm. Overall, all this stuff wouldn't necessarily be bad if it had something new to do with it or new to say about it, but it's just so painfully generic and standard and cliched. There's nothing here that you haven't seen done a thousand times before and much better. Action Lab is a small independent comic. They do tend to have something that with a more uh, moral to their story, so maybe... More kick to it? Yeah, we'll get to that, though. Something down the line. Yeah. The next one we have... This one is from Image Comics. This is Dead at 17. The Blasphemy Throne number one. This is important to note just because this is... I think it's the second or third yeah. entry into this. This is the conclusion to the storyline for Dead at 17. And... It definitely feels like it. There's a lot missing. I mean, as far as a new reader coming in, it's okay if you can get past all the text. Yeah, there's like walls of text in this comic. And if you don't know it's following up to previous series, you will be very confused by what's going on. Like, it is just exposition for new readers in some segments, but it doesn't make it clear that this is a follow-up comic. I think that could have been a lot clearer. Exactly. So it really does... Uh, there's, a, there's a good story under all that text, yeah. if you can get through it. Next, back over to Action Lab, we have The First Hero, which I actually like. This is a very good one. Uh, it basically takes place in a world where there are a small number of superhumans in the human population, but when you get superpowers, it makes you go insane. Incurably homicidal, psychopathic, rage-induced insane. As it would. Exactly, yeah. And so as they're treated as threats by the government and often hunted down, because they have the power of a nuclear bomb and are kookier than a fruitcake. But in this comic, we see the first person to gain superpowers and not go crazy. He's a soldier serving in Afghanistan. This first issue is mainly summed up by him manifesting his powers in the midst of a tense combat situation and getting through that, but it sets up the situation nicely. Our main character is likable and sympathetic, mm -hmm. and there's some foreshadowing for future storylines that could go on. The possibility of him actually losing his sanity in the future comes up, along with the ability of people to find out and how the government might respond. But overall, it's a very strong first issue. The location, his occupation, obviously, makes yeah. him immediately... Uh I guess likable yeah. in some sense, but also the fact that he's in the war zone does explain why maybe they wouldn't find him immediately. Exactly. There's a task force that has been set up to hunt down these people because mo all of them in the past have yeah. gone insane, and that's obviously dangerous. So It certainly raises the question, though, of how other hunted. countries act towards this, because we only know how yeah. America responds to superhumans in this universe. So it'd be interesting to see him like in the future he's trying to take refuge in Argentina or something. Maybe other countries try to use them, even though they are insane. Exactly. But yeah, a really interesting universe and a likable main character with a great setup. I recommend this one. Another actually really recommended one. Yeah. This is from Boom Studios. This is Hex. And despite the cover looking a lot like Pretty Deadly and all, that's mm -hmm. the, it's just the cover art. Inside it's a little bit more generic, which was a little bit of a disappointment considering yeah. I really did like Pretty Deadly. However, the storyline is very cool. It is yeah. a lot like a mix between a Tomb Raider mm -hmm. with a Constantine. Yeah. Female Constantine that just is a master thief, but uh, of the arcane yeah. ritual and artwork. In this kind of a story, I'm, the most important part is how they visualize the mystic arts elements to it. Mm -hmm. And I really like that here. You've got weird magic paintings and mystic masks, but they don't look generic. They don't look like just your standard tiki mask or wish doctor mask. It looks very unique, and I haven't seen anything that actually does this outside of maybe a Goosebumps or so. So I really liked seeing this sort of thing again. It felt unique. It felt like I hadn't read this in other comics before. And, and I really like... Uh, uh, the exposition in here is really well done. Nothing is overly thrown at you, but it is enjoyable. There's even some comedic relief in yeah. one of the, uh, the assistants, the interns. And there were a few times where I laughed out loud reading it. It is. Yeah. The intern says exactly what you're thinking. Like, this is just crazy. That's a great thing to do. It's very witty. It's very funny and punchy. And I liked that. So, uh, I definitely have recommend Hex. Yeah. And then finally, the last one from uh, Action Labs from their Mature Readers line is Southern Dog, which is about werewolves in the American Deep South. Uh, 
Even without better Deep South comics to compare it to, like Southern Bastards from Image, this is still pretty bland and dull. There's very little atmosphere to the location. Uh, the main character is ultimately quite boring, and the werewolves just look terrible. They look completely out of place in the southern setting. They look like they'd just be sweating and barely able to move because it'd be so hot and they're so covered with fur. It's just This concept might probably have never worked from the very start, but they could have gotten a better artist or at least some better design work for it. Well, at least they're using uh, werewolves and not vampires for once. Yeah, it's true. I mean, that's probably the best I can say We don't say need another food blood. Yeah. So... But, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend this one. It's a little dull and uninspired. Yeah, First Heroes and Hex were definitely the takeaways from this week. Yeah, those would be my recommendations. Our reviews. And speaking of the reviews yeah. on FrontTowardsGamer.com, Leto has a bunch of them up there, mm -hmm. and not just number ones. There are, of course, Blurb Views number one yeah, and Blurb Views. That Blurb Views is where I'm looking at a whole bunch of number ones and various issues that I don't have enough to do a full review on, but just about a paragraph or two. Mm -hmm. You've got the latest issues of The Spread, Chastity from Dynamite Comics, and How Tunes. Uh, I check out that one. Altoons was pretty cool. Yeah, like check it out there for my full paragraph review. Also got uh, Flash Gordon and Nail Biters, two of my favorite ongoing series right now. Flash Gordon number four, Nail Biter number four. Yep. Uh, Splinter Cell Echoes number two. That's a really interesting series. Uh, it's worth looking at the read for that one just for what an interesting take it is on Splinter Cell as a franchise. I recommend that one. And uh, Inferno Rings of Hell from our boys at Xenoscope. Yep, always like Xenoscope. And they're going through this is my favorite series. of the Xenoscope number one. So I'm just like, you have to read to find out why, but check it out. Yeah, definitely check that out. Along with the fact that, obviously, besides comic books and everything, uh, we're doing some movie reviews. Yeah. And besides yeah. the strain number five, because yeah. that's a continuing every week, you also had a new movie review. Yeah, a review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The 2014 version is up from Michael Bay and Friends. Uh, uh, yeah, it made enough money to get a sequel, so you might as well check out the review to know what you're going to be getting into if you decide you need to see it. Uh, no spoilers here, but... I will say I'm not a Turtles fan by show. I haven't really watched any of the previous stuff a lot, so I wouldn't say I was as rage-induced as some other critics. I found it more fascinating than awful, but you have to find out why by reading the review. Yeah, and as a fan of the cartoons and growing up on the cartoons, and like I said, I had the pizza shooter, Yeah, I'm not even going to bother. Yeah, that's probably a good call. Yeah. And that's it for this week. A little quick, as you can see, coming straight from work. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to wrap this up this week, but we will be back next week. Mm -hmm. Which is, Lito, you're going back to college next yeah, week. I'm back to California. You so. and your edumacation. I know, right? So, it'll just be me next week, probably for the next week or two, mm -hmm. until uh, Comic Station, the shop, and everything gets a little bit back onto our normal schedule coming off the uh, summer Sorry. vacations. Yep. Getting ready for the holiday season. Yep. So, until then, until then, I will see you next week. And it's been fun. Bye.